So in four days, Jupiter comes back into Aries for the second bite out of the Aries apple that we'll have with this Jupiter cycle of Jupiter and Aries. And this video, we're going to talk about it. We're going to prepare for it. We're going to think about some things related to it. Jupiter into Aries, kickstarting 2023. Let's dive in. And I want to start just by thinking uh, about the dates. Let's just get these dates clarified here. Um, we are starting uh, here in, tw in four days, 20 December at 3.32 in the afternoon here in Central Europe. You're going to have Jupiter re-enter Aries and it'll be there until 16 May, 2023. That's a mere uh, under five months, four months and a, and a, a, a big chunk of a fifth month where Jupiter will be in Aries and it will never return. So this is it. This is our fast moving Jupiter in Aries, activating all of those placements there, aspecting a bunch of stuff, and then it's over. And then we get this more creative Jupiter uh, when Jupiter enters Taurus and it won't station retrograde until 4 September. So we have, we'll have a long time now of a fast moving direct Jupiter hitting a bunch of stuff. And I wanna talk about it because this happens in four days. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the shift. So Jupiter is in Pisces. Currently, Jupiter has been in Pisces three months in the middle of 2021. Um, um, then it was in Pisces for five months, six months, uh, five-ish months at the beginning of 2022. And then it snuck back in for the six weeks at the end of 2022. And just using the Tarot, we can see that um, Pisces in the Tarot is the moon. And look at this uh, symbolism. It's the nighttime. Right, It's looking up at the moon, looking at awe. Wow, look at that moon. Who am I? What does it mean to be human? That moon's beautiful. It's communicating to me. Things that are more interpersonal about our ontology or our selfhood or our cosmology even. This is Piscean. You know, It's nighttime. It's reflective. The moon reflects the light of the sun. It's a reflective sign. It's an inward sign being the water sign. And so when we shift from Jupiter and Pisces into Aries, you can see how stark the shift is just by looking at the Tarot. It's the emperor that's the sign of Aries. The emperor is, what does an emperor do? Rules, uh, judgment, out in the world, engaged in a kingdom, building a kingdom, you know, maybe defending a kingdom. It's very much outer oriented and it's passion. It's the, what is Mars? Conflict. What is Aries? A, the day sect fire sign that Mars rules. It's about self. The sun is the exaltation ruler of Aries. So. You can see when Jupiter leaves Pisces, we're leaving a more reflective phase and we're now re-entering this more outer world, passionate, engaged side of Jupiter. Jupiter does well in both signs and Aries, and we'll talk about that, but I think this is my next point here from Twitter. Jupiter does well in Aries. It has night triplicity rulership there. And so this is the major thing is that we still have a strong Jupiter for the first part of 2023. This this fiery, passionate Jupiter. And I had here the big visions of Jupiter work well with the maverickism of Mars and the individualism of the sun, right? You clarify who you are and you show your light and you decide to go out into the world and then you have Jupiter there helping, giving ideas and and reformulating plans and giving inspiration. And and so after Mars stations direct, we it's gonna move even faster. Um, but look at Jupiter's first round in Aries, 11 May 2022 through 28 October 2022. That was a preview. And you can just go back. What was your summer 2022 like into the fall? Um, you know, look at what happened. Look what emerged. Examine the house topics in your nativity. Look where Aries is. What planets is it hitting? What houses Aries comprise? And, and this will give you a big preview of how to prepare for, it's gonna, we're in it now effectively, four days is nothing. This thing is, we're probably feeling it and it's about to arrive. But as you're preparing in these final days, you know, just look back, maybe there were some big events or some big themes related to those house topics that you can say, all right, I'm gonna get a second pass, a second dose, a second, you know, hit of this Jupiter and Aries energy. And you'll be more prepared by having some reflection here in these final days of Jupiter and Pisces. Um, but yes, this is the key point. Jupiter is going to traverse fresh ground over 21 degrees in Aries that it has not hit yet. And so it's very exciting for cardinal signs and for other signs that Aries sees because there's all of those placements are going to get activated. Everything that was, if your Jupiter in Aries uh, for 2022 was maybe less than you had hoped for, it might be because Jupiter is going to hit a bunch of degrees that will activate your chart more directly.
And so um, here is that uh, shown in a diagram. Jupiter, again, moves through Aries very fast and hits every degree of Aries, never comes back to Aries and after it leaves in May 2023. But look what Jupiter aspects. It hits everything in Aries by conjunction. All planets in Gemini and Aquarius, those air signs, get uh, sextiles. The other... Um, so those, and then Libra gets opposition. So every air sign gets lit up by Jupiter in, um, in, in Aries. All placements in those air signs, your midheaven, your ascendant, any planets there are gonna get some of this dose of the maverick, exciting Jupiter pushing forward, moving into the world with power energy. And you'll have sextiles and trines. Um, the trines come in with the fi other fire signs. So Leo and Sagittarius, very supportive. And then you get cardinal signs getting that dynamic square that can maybe push Capricorn and push Cancer a little bit more dynamically. But still, Jupiter is not like other planets like Mars and Saturn, where the squares and oppositions to Jupiter are harmful. They're actually quite helpful. And you pick up any ancient astrological text, anytime Jupiter is touching any point, you love it. You want that. Anytime Venus is touching any point, you want that. Now, does it mean the square isn't delineated? No, it just might mean it's a little bit more dynamic or tension filled, but it's still going to be ultimately positive from what the textbooks say astrologically. All of these signs are in play for the first half of 2023 of getting major Jupiter activation. So it's very exciting. Just check your chart. Where, what do you have in these signs? And this is the opportunity to kind of move in to 2023, set the tone in the first half with great power. Okay, let me come to this next point. Part of the excitement of Jupiter re-entering Aries is that it gets and hits all of these planets. So I just said that, not sure why I included this twice. Let me move on. This is my favorite keyword for Jupiter right now, is revelation, things that get revealed. The power of coming into epiphany and revelation and seeing reality clearly. This is what Jupiter does. Is it always easy? No, it's not. Sometimes revelation is the most difficult thing because we can we see, oh no, I've been bad or I've been, you know, I've been operating in a way that's faulty and that's caused me pain. And now I can see that clearly. So the gift of Jupiter is that you reveal the truth. Keywords like justice go all the way back in the tradition. And justice is about determining what's true and then apportioning. Uh, reality accordingly. And so this is what Jupiter does. It's going to reveal. And so when you think about it in Aries, you might have revelations that, that inspire you to actively engage in the outer world. Like I was saying with the, uh, the Aries power, Mars and the sun, and then Jupiter there, it's very much a powerful move into the outer reality. Here's an AI. I love this one. I generated a few of these. This is one that remained. This is kind of Jupiter, right? It's got the support of Aries holding up maybe the self and the action and the motivation and the clarity and then coming into the world. And there's a lot of support here uh, and a lot of power in this image, I, th I thought. So it's very much that powerful Jupiter and Aries that's confirming the inner passion in Pisces and then now acting on those passions as Aries and the fire sign gets activated to move into that world. Um, okay, what else do I have here? Jupiter is a planet of lifting the veil of lies. That is not very often an easy process. Again, revelation can be challenging and difficult. Seeing reality clearly is difficult sometimes. Um, and yet the truth uh, sets matters straight, or at least we have opportunities. That's how I can also think about Jupiter, or we can, is that it's opportunity. It's the opportunity that comes from Revelation. Now, we don't have to take it, but I think opportunities are often part of the Jupiter story, wherever it's transiting. Look to your Aries sector. Look to those other points that are getting aspects from Jupiter. And this is where opportunities may be emerging here in the first half of 2023 for you, and starting here on the winter solstice or the day before the winter solstice. It's a long way of saying embrace the tougher side, tougher side of Jupiter transits because they're trying to assist. So often we like to think about Jupiter as bags of money and beautiful people to hang out with, you know? Um, that is certainly one part of it. I mean, when you think about the opportunities of Jupiter, there's no doubt a side of it that comes with uh, powerful people, money, people, beneficence, parties, hopes, dreams, having access to things. But, um, you know, that's not the whole story. Often even like hanging out, if you get a bag of money, you win the lottery, that can mess people up. You know, even having the money doesn't do anything. Their tendency, it just allows them to act on tendencies. So you hear those stories that the lottery money doesn't really change things. Um, and so money is not the answer here, but you know, money does give opportunity. And so when you have resources, you actually can change some things that money allows you to do. 
but I'm just going to say here, embrace the tougher side of the transit. You know, if it's not bags of cash in that house topic or, you know, new, just beautiful things, look for the truth, look for, um, realizations around what is true and what where the power is actually found in those house topics and you might have to be swallowing you know a, a, a pill that's a little bitter but that's just what jupiter doing its thing so if it's hard people say well jupiter came into pisces it's challenging yeah it's challenging to reveal things and to process the truth sometimes part of the jupiter opportunity is engaging with the challenge whereas before jupiter arrived the challenge wasn't being engaged with jupiter brought that opportunity Okay, let me come back here. Here's another little AI image I generated. I thought this was cool for more of the um, processing like the truth, right? This is some, a dude that's just like meditating on the truth. And then this is like the outer world that he's about to engage into, or it's like a, a symbiotic process. The inner realization supports the outer action. And so I love this. The red is certainly an Aries color and a martial color. This is kind of a wing that's interesting. This is all like the surrealist stuff that I like to do with the AI. I don't like I don't like using um, strict uh, expressionism. I just think that's boring. So, okay, let's push. Now I wanna talk about just a few charts with Jupiter's and Aries to keep you abreast of, keep your mind around some of the peaks of this next five, uh, just under five months of Jupiter there. First chart is 2nd March, 2023. It's that yearly Jupiter-Venus conjunction. And I love this chart so much. I'm a, such a big fan of this chart. By the way, this is a chart to use for elections. This is one of the best charts, okay, coming up here. If you're thinking about when do I do the launch or when do I do, this is one to consider because you have a waxing moon in Cancer, okay? That's beautiful to build on things and grow things. That Cancer moon is protected by um, no harmful configurations to either Mars or Saturn. It's actually averse to them. It's trying and sextile the lunar nodes and it's receiving this double overcoming square from the benefics joined in Aries. That's the exaltation ruler, Jupiter of Capricorn. So it's received by its exaltation ruler and, th and those benefics are overcoming the moon by trine. You can find it here. Uh, I just picked the, ex you know, pretty close to when the conjunction is exact of Venus and Jupiter, but you get the moon a little bit earlier applying to that or enclosed to there. That's a power election. This is an amazing chart. Mars is direct, Mercury is direct. What also I love here is that Mercury and Saturn are conjoined. This is, these are the two power planets of Aquarius, very much innovation and deep thinking, and deep analysis. So major, major option for elections, this second March chart, and you can tinker with it. This isn't, it's all about your location when you do an election and the rising sign and where the moon is in that place. So it's not, but this is a candidate moment, this early Cancer moon in early March for a, a great election. But keep in mind, this is gonna be peak beneficence of the Jupiter and Aries story as it conjoins Venus once a year. Next chart I wanna look at 20 April, 2023. And this is a major moment. It's the 420 solar eclipse, the first eclipse in Aries, the first eclipse in the Aries Libra axis. The nodes will have not shifted yet, but this first eclipse brings focus into the eclipse story that will arrive in Aries starting next year, 2023, and continuing into 2024. And by the way, the 420 thing I think is fun. I don't smoke any marijuana. I just want to be, I'm not like a, a advocating that. I haven't done that in decades and or over one decade. So just to be clear about that, but it's kind of cool. A 420, if you're celebrating 420 during an eclipse with some uh, mind altering, mind expansion, what for the drug that 420 applies, uh, implies. Maybe this would be a time not to go full bore on 420 with that eclipse energy. Um, I would maybe stay at home and, uh, you know, oh, anyhow, that's a separate topic. Just know that this is Jupiter and Aries mixes with this first solar eclipse. And so these expansions, the maverickism, the clarity of motivation, the truth that Jupiter is going to reveal and then power action from a basis of that truth. This is now in line to mix with a, a powerful solar eclipse, very close to the North Node. So this would be very visible somewhere. Um, and I'll have to check on the visibility on that, actually. But but this just, you know, so this is another peak of the Jupiter and Aries story. It's early March. It's this eclipse here in April. And and then what else here? Um, this is the final thing I wanted to mention in this video. Mars direct in Gemini in January. That's 12 January. I mentioned that earlier. And so January, February, and March until uh, Mars leaves um, 
uh, Gemini and goes into Cancer, um, you will have this Mars that as it's recovering from the retrograde and moving faster, it is receiving Jupiter and Aries. And so another way to say that is that Jupiter and Aries, while Mars is retrograde from the 20th until the 12th of January, 20th of December, 12th of January, that Jupiter and Aries might be a little blocked. Okay. It's ruler, it's domicile ruler is not functioning. But by the time we get into February in that March chart, I showed you, you'll have a faster moving Mars. And then even when Mars enters uh, cancer, there's a reception, a mutual reception between uh, the exaltation Lord of cancer. And then the domicile Lord of Aries mutually receiving each other via square. You know, there's a lot of these uh, power ups that fuel Q1 in terms of the relationship of Mars and Jupiter the rulership scheme, and then the synodic uh, cycle of Mars vis-a-vis -vis the sun, that that, that that is all going to be big power and big expansion, late January, February, March. Keep that in mind and get ready because your uh, Aries sector, your uh, Gemini sector, and your can uh, Cancer sector, hell, even your Scorpio sector, you can throw that in. Those are all going to be massively main characters in Q1. And, and and then into the Q2. And so you'll have great opportunities there to move with power and force into the reality. It's your emperor hat, your emperor vibe. You're going to get that going here and move in with power to this year. So very exciting. And that's why I wanted to do this video. I wanted to talk about this major shift that's about to happen in four days and give you some insight about some of these dates and how this may unfold. Glad to be here. Glad to be talking about it. Here's my website, sjanderson144.com. You can just check out my reading schedule there and you've got my some of my latest videos you can see there. And anyhow, it's just a great privilege to be here, to be talking astrology. And I wish you all the best. Have an amazing first little bit of Jupiter in Aries arriving in four days. And I'll talk to you very, very soon. Take care.